Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Imagine you're in mid-flight on a passenger jet, and the captain flies directly into a Category 5 hurricane. The flight attendant calmly says, The captain has turned on the fasten seat belt sign, as we may be expecting some turbulence. Of course, this situation is absurd, as no passenger jet pilot would ever put his passengers in such danger. But, tragically, governments sometimes do exactly that. Sometimes, they do it on a small scale, such as when a small country adopts collectivism, only to discover, decades later, that collectivism doesn't actually work, and, eventually, as Maggie Thatcher said, you run out of other people's money. Then, there's a period of depression, followed by a rebuilding period, during which the electorate decides whether to be sensible and dumb collectivism, or whether they choose to be foolish, and begin the collectivist conundrum anew. As absurd as this latter choice might seem, it is all too common. Argentina, in particular, has been doing it for nearly 80 years. But the larger the country, the greater the catastrophe when it all falls apart. And it, therefore, stands to reason that when it's the world's foremost empire that's passed its L by date, the damage will be catastrophic. The damage from the hurricane will be centered on the empire itself, and those within the empire will be most directly impacted, but the effects will be felt well outside its borders. The more closely a country is connected to the empire economically, the greater, the lesser country will feel the damage. For example, at the present time, if the US is a country's major trading partner, that country will experience damage significant enough that its economy might well collapse along with that of the US. But why should we be talking about this now? Yes, the US is indeed troubled, both internally and externally. Still, the news media have regularly presented national leaders and other pundits, who assure us that the storm that's being flown into, will only result in temporary turbulence, and that Category 5 is a gross exaggeration. Well, let's have a look at that for a moment. In the last half century, the US has gone from being the foremost creditor nation, to the foremost debtor nation. At that same time, its wage level has risen so high that the US can no longer sell American-made goods, even to Americans, and its factories, predominantly in China and Mexico, are producing the vast majority of goods. Unfortunately, relations are on a steady decline between the US and these countries. The US has even been engaged in saber-rattling with regard to China. But the US empire has always had an ace in the hole with Europe. Although it's self-destructively on a campaign to end fossil fuel production domestically, it has for decades provided liquefied gas to Europe, shipping primarily into Hamburg Harbor and distributing from there. In the meantime, Germany formed an alliance with Russia, from whom it also receives gas to power the German industry. In recent years, Russia has been building a direct pipeline from Russia to Germany, to provide gas more cheaply than any other country can provide, at roughly 11% of what US gas can be provided for. With the understanding that this gas line would come on stream in 2022, Germany foolishly shut down all of its nuclear power plants, thus painting itself into a corner. Clearly, the opening of the Nord Steam 2 valve would have been a major major event, as it would not just mean cheaper gas for Europe, but an end of US hegemony over Europe, and a shift in the balance of trade to Russia. But the pipeline was sabotaged before this could happen. It would seem that US hegemony would be saved, as Europe would fold back on US gas, even though it was cripplingly expensive. But, an unexpected wrinkle occurred. Germany went shopping, and found that they could buy gas from China, India, and Saudi Arabia. It was more expensive than the Nord Steam gas, but still cheaper than the American gas. Odd though, as neither China nor India are gas producers. So, where was this gas coming from? 
Well, as China, India, and Russia are BRICS countries, the gas was the very gas that Germany was to have received through Nord Stream, but now quite a bit pricier, as it had to be piped quite a lot further, and there were also now middlemen to be paid. So, how did the situation play out? Well, the US gas is still the most expensive, and, therefore, least desirable, and Russia, instead of being economically crippled, was now selling more gas than before, and experiencing a boom at a time when much of the world was sliding into economic turmoil. And, in the ensuing 18 months, Germany would find that it could no longer sell its products internationally, as the cost to produce them was now even higher than before. Recently, there have been rumblings in the Bundestag that one out of three German industrial companies is hoping to leave the country, with a majority choosing China as their destination. Unless the US could salvage the situation, its hegemony over Europe and its claim to empire was soon to end. It was, however, true that there were significant oil and gas fields in the eastern Mediterranean. If they could be taken hold of, the US might stand a chance. But the rights to those fields were held by Palestine, and the US was known to staunchly support Palestine's archenemy, Israel. What to do? Well, although the Gaza-Israel border is the one of the most protected in the world, Hamas somehow breached it in multiple locations and went on a killing spree, in which, it is claimed, horrendous inhumane acts were committed. Proof of such acts have not been provided, but they've been well publicized and have led to a self-defense retaliation by Israel, in which Gaza is being systematically destroyed and its people being decimated. In spite of worldwide objection to this retaliation and repeated warnings from the UN and others that Israel must not take over Gaza, Israel's president insists that if Israel does not complete the destruction of Gaza and take over the control of its rubble, Israel will never be safe from in the bargain, the oil and gas fields will have a new owner. At this point, it would be advisable for the world, particularly Americans, to sit back and observe such events from a distance. Although Israel is charging ahead, the majority of the world is dividing into BRICS versus First World globalists camps. The former is already in the majority and growing rapidly. In describing his Israel-Palestine position, the US president appears to be changing from a black hat to a white one, and back again, repeatedly. While this makes the White House appear to be both hypocritical and untrustworthy in the extreme, there's little else the president can do. He's squeezed between a rock and a time bomb. I rarely talk on current events, preferring to focus on the overview, the big picture, but this may be a moment when it's important for you to sit far back from the present noise from the media and assess the degree to which your own future is dependent upon the outcome of these events. The jet pilot has turned into a Category 5 hurricane, and, for those who are on the flight, this would indeed be the time to fasten seatbelts. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.